Republican Congressman George Santos, meanwhile, has pleaded not guilty to additional federal charges. The congressman was in court in New York this morning. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins us now with all the latest. Scott, it's always great to see you. What else did we learn about the charges and when the trial could begin? New charges, new allegations, Meg, including this very provocative allegation that George Santos used his campaign donors' information to rack up credit card charges. He's pleaded not guilty to the added charges. He's already pleaded guilty to the fraud charges levied earlier this year. He says he's innocent and wants his day in court. And we learn, Meg, what that day in court's going to be. His trial is September 9th, 2024, 57 days before the 2024 election. The trial will happen in central Islip, New York, on this bold and broad case in which he's accused of engaging in widespread fraud, both to become a congressman and as a component of his campaign. George Santos still has his job in the U.S. House in the meantime, but he is under increasing pressure legally and politically. Well, let's talk about his current job because we know he is facing an expulsion vote next week. Is this something Republican lawmakers could get behind? Some of them will. The New York Republicans who have adjacent districts and are sick of answering questions about George Santos and face political blowback in their own areas because of George Santos want him expelled. No doubt Democrats will be part of that effort as well. But there's a real high threshold, Meg, to expel a sitting member of the U.S. House. Two thirds of the chamber must agree to do so. And I asked one of the supporters of the expulsion, New York's Mark Molinaro, if he thought that was even possible. The expulsion resolution, do you think there's a real chance it gets two-thirds votes? Um, it's a big high, it's a pretty high threshold. Yeah. George Santos has admitted to the fraudulent behavior uh, that we know is true. He shouldn't serve in Congress. He should have resigned. If this resolution comes to the floor, I certainly am voting for it, and I think that a good number of my colleagues will as well. And Meg, the clock is already ticking on that expulsion resolution. It was formally introduced Thursday by Anthony D'Esposito, another Long Island Republican, which means they have two legislative days early next week to decide to have a vote and possibly have a vote on the House floor. Hmm. Scott, let's talk about votes, the precious votes. Can Republicans afford to lose any votes in the House at this point? We just saw how a narrow majority can tie things up for Republicans. They spent three weeks just picking a new speaker because of those narrow margins. The new House Speaker, Mike Johnson from Louisiana, indicated on Fox News last night he'd be concerned about losing a member of that narrow majority. And that really has insulated George Santos throughout this Congress, that he is one of a precious few Republican votes in a four-person majority. So... They can ill afford to lose George Santos, especially with the political calculus being what it is, Meg, that that district he represents in New York is very purple. It supported Joe Biden in 2020. If there were a special election to succeed or replace George Santos, very good odds a Democrat would win. All right, Scott McFarlane with all the latest on the George Santos saga for us. Thank you. Thank you.